Welcome to our short introduction of fluids. Let's st start off with uh, what is matter. Matter can be uh, classified into three states. We have solid, which is basically anything that has definite volume and shape. We have liquids, which have a definite volume but not a definite shape. And lastly, we have gas, which is unconfined, and hence it doesn't have definite volume nor a definite shape. Solids are not fluids, only liquids and gases. So liquids and gases are basically fluids. They have definite shape, and they both have mass and weight. Okay, let's move on to our first definition, density. You probably were introduced to this back in middle school. Density is really how much matter can you pack into that amount of space. So it's the amount of mass per volume. The formula that we're going to be using is rho, which is the symbol that we use for density, which is equal to m over v. The typical SI units that we'll be using will be in kilograms per meter cube. That's what we'll be using in AP Physics. However, you will probably see also grams per centimeter cube. That's commonly used in your chemistry class. Just as a side note, one gram per centimeter cube, if you work through through dimensional analysis, is equal to 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. And there is a set of density values that you can find in your textbook on page 322. Um, and really, when you look at them, you'll see there's a variety of different densities, and it really comes down to a, uh, the, the amount of the atomic mass of these atoms and the spacing between them. Okay, another term that you're going to be seeing is specific gravity. Not a really great term, I would say, because it's nothing to do with gravity. I would say probably relative density would be a better term for it. It's the amount of... Um, the or a ratio of the density of the substance to the density of water. Now that's the density of water, by the way, at uh, four degrees Celsius and uh, one atm, so standard atmospheric pressure. Uh, this is commonly used in, in maybe uh, as a mechanic when they're looking at the the density of oil uh, relative to what it is in water. Or uh, I suppose if you're making beer, it, you know, we often will look at, or wine, you would look at the specific gravity of the substance as compared to water. Okay, and we won't probably see that very often, but if I did give you, say, the, the specific gravity of aluminum um, was, um, say, 2.7, Notice it has no units because there'll be kilograms per meter cubed on top and bottom, which means it's a unitless quantity. Then the density of aluminum would be 2.7 times the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's where you might use the specific gravity as to, oh, maybe they might not tell you the density, but you're supposed to know, oh, I multiply by the density of water and we get the density of it. Okay, now another important term that you'll need to know how to use, pressure. Pressure is defined as the amount of force per unit area. So the units of that will be the units of force, which are in newtons, divided by the units of area, which are in meters squared. So your SI units of pressure are in newtons per meter squared. We have a special name for these units. They're named after Pascal. Um, so we abbreviate that as a PA. Okay, so important points listed down below about pressure. So uh, we're talking about fluid pressure. So when you take an object and you, you submerge it within a fluid, uh, there'll be a pressure that will build up. As you go down deeper and deeper into the fluid, the pressure builds up at greater amounts. Um, these little arrows that you see on the picture represent the force. You'll notice that the force is perpendicular to the surface. So really that force in that definition of pressure is a perpendicular force. It's a perpendicular force that's acting on it. So if this was a metal plate coming in here into the surface, there would be a perpendicular force or a normal force acting on the plate from both sides. Um, so it's the amount of that normal force divided by area, which is the pressure. And you'll notice that these two plates, they're both at the same depth. They both actually have the same pressure. Yes, this plate here has twice the force, but it has twice the area, and hence they have the same pressure. So a couple important points to notice, um, that the pressure uh, exerts a force that is perpendicular to the surface of that object, 
And secondly, that when you're at the same depth within the fluid, the pressure will be the same in all directions at that depth. And another uh, second way to look at pressure that you'll find important when we talk about Bernoulli's theorem um, is that if you were to take that definition of pressure, which is force over area, and multiply the top and bottom by distance, then you'll see force times distance is really work. Area, or cross-sectional area, times the height is really volume. And so you can perceive pressure as really an energy in joules per meter cube, which is volume. Hence, it's called energy density. The reason why I'm bringing this up here is just that when we talk about Bernoulli's law, you might look at it and say, hey, this really looks like a conservation of energy. Well, it's kind of. It's like a, it's conservation of energy density, really. And just a quick little note about the units of pressure. Uh, you're going to find that there are some other units that we're going to be seeing. Sometimes you see in, in the textbook. Uh, for example, in, in meteorology, we have the unit called the bar. Uh, a bar is really equivalent to 10 to the power of 5 pascals. Or also used in weather stations, we have the millibar. And a millibar is equivalent to 100 pascals. So those, those units are used in um, uh, meteorology. Uh, we also have another unit that you've probably seen if you've ever lived in the States. That's called the PSI, or pounds per square inch. So LB divided by inch squared which is the same thing as PSI. Those are the both ways that you could write it. Uh, this is commonly used in the United States. And another unit of pressure uh, you've seen definitely in your chemistry class is called the atmosphere. Um, the atmosphere is abbreviated with an ATM. If you look at the next page in your notes, you'll see uh, atmosphere pressure. And you'll see these conversions uh, of an atmosphere is equivalent to 14 pounds per square inch which is equal to 1.013 bars or 1,013 millibars. Uh, but more importantly, this conversion right here. Now on the AP exam, they typically just write 1 ATM is 1.01 .01 to the power of 5, but this is more accurate here when you're using your WebAssign. And by the way, uh, if you haven't learned this before, uh, an ATM, which is the standard atmosphere pressure, is really the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere. That's the pressure in the sea of air um, in which we live. And this pressure varies with weather changes and with elevation. Uh, the average atmospheric pressure at sea level is used as a unit of pressure, and it's basically called an atmosphere. So 1 atm is the average atmospheric pressure at sea level which is equivalent to that. And you'll see that used on the AP exam quite a bit. We'll probably just round that off to 1.0 or 1.01. .01. And my last little note I want to refer to is the diagram shown down at the bottom of that first page. Uh, and that's just referring to how we measure pressure in a fluid. Um, you can make a little small device here. This is just really a, a piston, which has a sh movable shaft here attached to a light spring inside here. This is evacuated, so there's no air in here. It's a vacuum. And um, there's force exerted on all the surfaces when this goes into the fluid as it goes in here. But this part is movable. So as you go down deeper and deeper into the fluid, you'll notice that the shaft is, is getting pushed inwards. So uh, that's showing that the pressure is increasing in the liquid as you go down down deeper and deeper. That's what the diagram is showing, hopefully you see. You'll notice too, no matter what the orientation in here is, that the volume in here and the volume in here is the same because they're both the same pressure here and here. They're all the same pressure here. It really doesn't matter whether they're upside down or to the right or to the left. Uh, really, they're all the same pressure because pressure really acts all inwards uh, perpendicular to the surface. And one last thing that I forgot to mention, pressure is a scalar quantity. It has no direction. Yes, there's direction for the force, but pressure has no direction to it. So it's a scalar quantity. And that's it for our short introduction of fluids, density, pressure. And I think you're ready to tackle the first example now.